this dude was out of the house before we even got on the phone. By the time I actually realized he was out of the house, he was in the car, <laughs> buckled in, opened the door of the car, ran in the car, buckled himself in. I was wondering where he in. was, because he got off the phone and Sailor was like, where's Levi? Indy Jones, back with a trendy flow. I'm still trying to find my voice in this hip scenario. Here we go. Today is Sunday fun day. It's not really Sunday. That's just when you're watching this, but I'm trying to get ahead on these vlogs. And Levi told me that his friend Sayla I sent me a message. Sent you a message, but it wasn't but it wasn't a real message. It was an imaginary message. But I decided to FaceTime Sayla's dad, my buddy Jimmy, to see what they were doing and to take Levi over there. Jimmy is a, I guess you would call a local community activist. He's done a lot of really good stuff in Oceanside. And I thought it'd be really cool to get him on camera, kind of sharing his heart. He just finished law school and he's about to be doing a bunch of work in the community. So thought it'd be fun to bring Levi along. We can turn the whole world around. I'm in the backseat, really trying to hold it down. And If you're wondering where my wife is, she is at a friend's concert that's doing, I think, a, I don't know, some kind of worship band, Christian thing. That's where she's at. It's me and Levi. I decided to come see my guy, Jimmy and Janae. There she is. What up, y'all? Come on in. Janae's vlog ready. I was it's, like a, it's like a zoo getting through all these bushes. Hi, baby. Yo, we were watching a new video, dog. Why is Rue lying in his lyrics? What are you talking about? I was like, I was just at this full swim lesson. These oh. <laughs> I was like, both of these kids were okay. trying to get in the pool. You completely did not understand that that lyric. What I was saying was. Of that I'm certain regardless, whatever man recalls. Trying to make a splash like when my son be yelling cannonball. Cannonball. Trying to make a splash. Like when my son be yelling cannonball. He's only three though, similar to me though. Right, right. Thinking no, I alone can go be some it. sort of hero. But earlier that day, me and Monette were sitting next to each other in the right, right. Yeah. And the teacher's telling Sayla and Levi, jump in, and both of them are crying. Yeah. And I looked over at Monette and said, they ain't gonna be swimming till they're eight. <laughs> Jimmy and I go back to the old school days at New Venture. He just got his law degree killing it, doing some amazing stuff in the community. Recently, I worked in the Deep Valley of Oceanside. You've done some work in the Deep Valley of Oceanside. I feel like a couple months ago, maybe a year ago, I remember what you did something with that literally touched people's lives in a amazing way. And I know you come from like a gang background, got saved, life radically transformed because of Jesus, but you helped them reroute yeah, a man. bus that was taking people two hours to get to our community college, which is I went to Maricosta, you went to Maricosta. The people that need the education were going way out of their way, two hour drive that takes people 15 minutes tops on a car. Right. So tell us like what you did, how you did it, and like what, what the, the motivation basically. Well, there was a time um, in the past few years, I used to run after school program in that area and we worked really hard to make sure, give hope to all the students that they can go to college, mm -hmm. that they can graduate from high school. You know, we were in an area where there's three gangs, a lot of crime, not a lot of hope. And we were able to have, within the after school program, a 100% high school graduation rate. Wow. While we were there. 100%. 100%. That's every, every kid graduated. And so at that time, we were like, okay, how can we get these kids to college? So we created a partnership with uh, the community college and had all our kids enter enrolled in the college but through a cohort mm -hmm. so we had we got them plugged we got them books we even got them uh, meal vouchers we got them probably got them through the fafsa process financial everything aid, man but it was yeah. but we went above and beyond yeah we we encountered the, the stupidest problem though yeah the kids couldn't get there and it was like they were telling me it was taking two hours to get there on the bus oh uh, yeah i know and i know that right, 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 right. like i know that but route. it's only like four miles apart yeah. four or five miles apart right <laughs> And so the street that the Deep Valley begins on is College Boulevard. And it's called College Boulevard because it connects to Maricosta. It's Maricosta College. So you can get to Maricosta from the Deep Valley on one street, yeah. right? But the way that the bus configuration was set up, that it would take the kids all the way west to the beach through multiple rival gang neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And then the kids would have to wait at the beach and then travel all the way back east right. just to get to school. Right. And so met with the kids, 
from there kind of created a pitch to show the community the need not that they didn't need it they knew about the need yeah but it was more to show the city um the school district even the police department everyone that's involved in the city of oceanside why why this needs to get done right um everyone agreed on it most people had no idea that that that, that was a route yep most people just believed that it was a direct route already yeah uh, but this is historic i mean i used to take the bus down there and it would take me two hours right yep and so hey <laughs> the kids um, were playing yeah man we we pitched it to the city every you had a lobby each person yep. individually and from there we were able to have a meeting with nctd which is the agency that oversees the public bus um, out here in oceanside everyone agreed and it was crazy because at the time they were like man we agreed that this is a priority we just have no money mm. and they started looking at their numbers and they were seeing that a lot of their routes were actually losing well every route loses money yeah. but they were seeing that some of these routes were really not bringing anything in mm -hmm. and so they were like let's shift some of our routes around to maybe we can at least break even on some yeah. somewhere yeah and so they reached out to me and they said hey we think that this might be a possibility wow it took me about a year um to gain community support to have these meetings um but within a year man it's cool because now i, I drive down the street in the valley and i see that bus yeah i see that bus at least yeah, once yeah. a day the 315. yep and so it was it a whole new bus bus route they or? created a whole new route it wow. wasn't a new bus but it was a new route new route yeah and so i checked with nctd because at the same time when you do something in the community you want to make sure that both parties like right you know win right yep. i don't want them to just have a route and they're losing money yeah and i reached out to them i was like hey how's the route doing do we need to you know step up our marketing game within the community yeah and he was like man the route's crushing it wow yeah and they built a transit center there probably about 10 years ago right right right, right. So it's so random they would build a transit center right in the deep valley and not have a bus go from there to common Maricosta sense College. it was common sense and the crazy thing is it was actually faster for kids the way that the public uh, system set up right now it's actually it was faster for kids to get to palomar college from the deep valley and oceanside oh my gosh than to get to that's so dope <laughs> so you saw a practical need in the community in the process you've also obviously you know you, you went to college and got your degree right. you just got your law degree right. you're about to be going back into the community doing some more work what do you think people are watching and i'm sure people are watching that come from similar backgrounds maybe people that are in the deep valley from poverty not a lot of opportunity not access to education right what do you think is the number one problem that's plaguing people in uh urban underdeveloped areas and what do you think is the number one solution the number one issue we see with more like marginalized uh, low-income communities man is is the lack of equity being funneled in to some of these communities right okay so when we have when you say lack of equity what do you mean for instance the bus was a, a, a prime example okay where and, and i don't mean just necessarily like financial resources mm -hmm. but resources mm -hmm. so ideally if you have a community that's struggling what we want to do is you want to create an ecosystem that's built around the student okay. built around the actual community right so the student doesn't have to struggle to say okay how do I get to college? Yep. How do I connect to resources? How do I connect to jobs? How do I connect to government? Mm -hmm. You want your city to have everything revolve around your student or around that person. Yep. A lot of times with some of those neighborhoods, it's even more distant, okay. right? So like if you come from a home from we've been privileged now um, to go to college and uh, overcome some of these obstacles, we can create those spaces for our kids right right and right. we know how to navigate through that system but if you live in a neighborhood where no one has has a college degree maybe you have a lot of uh, people that are immigrants mm -hmm. right so there's even a level a lower level of education coming from whatever country they came from mm -hmm. um it's hard to navigate through that system right so creating uh, an ecosystem mm. for our youth to succeed mm -hmm. it will just create more opportunities for our children to succeed or our youth to succeed but sometimes like i said it's not necessarily financial resources it's just making things accessible mm -hmm. and for people to have access um and so by access i think i think you're also specifically talking about so you said creating equity value right. in these communities and i think by access is the solution that you're kind of hinting at outside of like building systems and lobbying local yeah. government to do some of the stuff you did right. but you're also talking about access to mentors yeah access absolutely. to Accused. people like yourself yeah. uh people like timothy people right, right. people that maybe have came from that element defied the odds made it made something of themselves whether right. it's law school whether it's just coming out and being a, a, a contributing member to society right, right, right. access to people right right and the, i guess the practical step for people here that are watching this is like who are you who are you attempting to pull up with you 
right? A lot of us come from poor areas. A lot of us come from families that have been mass right. incarcerated right. or affected by mass incarceration. Right. Um, we become successful, right? But who are you? Who, whose hand are you pulling into the environment? You've consistently mentored kids. I've mentored kids. I think that's the one of the most practical solutions. Is yeah. Just making yourself available. Absolutely. So, you know, if me and you were to go over there right now, we automatically, just by us stepping foot, are a resource in that entire community because you're probably not going to find two individuals with a college degree right. in that space, mm. right? And so when we ran the after school program, that's something I would share with my staff all the time. I said, you're not only a mentor to these kids, but some of these parents might come and ask you, man, I don't know how to do my taxes. Mm. And sometimes it's just plugging them into the people that know how to do that. Yep. One, mentorship's huge, yep. but also you become an, you're automatically like a hope agent, right? So mm. you're a hope dealer, whatever. You're in the community and people are able to touch you yep. by you being there and they, and they see that you've been able to navigate through all this and be successful and overcome whatever it is that you had to overcome but that you look like them, you sound like them, you understand them, and you're yep. attentive to what they need. Yep. Being around provides hope to others. That's good. Yeah. My question for you guys in the comments section below, are you around? Are you around? Are you engaged? Are you available? Are you accessible? Are you somebody that's investing back into the community you came from? You know, for me, a lot of people reach out to me, a lot of people DM me and ask me for stuff. But one of the things I'm intentionally doing is connecting with people in the local North County area. We've done open mics. We don't mass promote them, but we, we try and create opportunity for people that are in our direct proximity that don't have the information, the access, whether that be literally from a system standpoint right. like you're talking about or just music, entrepreneurship. Like, are you around and are you available to the people that need you? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure you guys check out okay. Jimmy Figueroa, all the stuff he's gonna be doing. Uh, the next Oceanside <laughs> mayor, mayor someday. Yeah. I don't know, we'll see. All right, peace. All right.